and we're popping over to Shino's base. He's there at the moment and he's got some mortar from me. And it's a good chance for me to actually do a bit of show and tell of his base. I didn't get a chance to show it in the last episode. And uh, yeah, I kind of want to show it. He's done so much work. It's such a nice base. So we're gonna I'm going to pop over to Shino's area. I'll meet you over there. And uh, Shino's going to give me a bit of a tour of his lovely, lovely base. Okay, guys, I will see you over there. Right, guys, so we made it to uh, Shino's base. Uh, well, we made it to Shino's gates. He is around. I know he's around because uh, we are in a Discord call together. It's just fine. Yeah, uh, right above you. Right, well, there he goes. Yeah, <laughs> there he is. So, as you know, I, I have told my audience that um, obviously they they was unable to see your base in my last video. Uh, and uh, to be honest, uh, it's such a nice base you've got this season. I, I've come over to have a good old pork around. And how do you open your door, by the way? Come on, open up. So, so what? What is your general for my audience? Just in case that there's maybe one person who watches me and who doesn't watch you. Uh, for my audience, what's your general theme for this season, bud? Oh, so I wanted to kind of go with more of a medieval field. Um, kind of like a, I started off with just a gatehouse is what I thought. And I thought, no, I can do more with this. So started out with the gatehouse um, and then uh, some walls. And I've got a glitch. I can actually see underneath the ground. Hey, there's a teleporter. <laughs> cool. Okay. <laughs> I got a glitch. Uh, but anyway, so I started off with the gatehouse and just kind of expanded it from there. So originally, I thought I was going to live in this area here. Uh, but I kind of changed my mind a little bit. We'll go in and take a look at it. So the idea is if you ever go to like a medieval village, you usually have, you know, the gatehouse, the yep. gate. Yep. And then you'll end up having High Street. Yes, and that's you'll right. end up having Market Street. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. this is oh, going to be right. High Street course. right here. Yeah, because if you look at it, yeah. it oh, of course, because it splits off. Yes, yeah. Yep. Right. So this is going to be Market Street here. So this is where typically in a medieval village, you would have a, uh, the houses are 15 meters by, by uh, wide. And then however much you have, uh, as far as the depth goes. Oh, can I ask you, and, you know, how, how did you, sure. how have you done this bit here? The little beams you've got going. You oh, just chiseled, just, just chiseled. Uh, yeah, just walnut slab, just chiseled it out. Yeah. That's really nice. It looks really, really nice. The, <laughs> uh, yeah, and then I added just the uh, the normal uh, reinforced beams to kind of fill it in around it. It looks really, really good. It looks really, really yeah. good. So Sweet. each one of these houses are identical size on the width, and you'll see they go up different heights, and some of them stick out more, some of them stick out less. Well, so whenever these villages were laid out at the 15 by 15, you had to pay not only by the number of windows that you had, Course, the number of windows yes, used for a house, yes. but also you weren't allowed to build out into the road because that was owned by the city. I remember so people that, would build yes. out up. Yeah, instead yeah. of building out. So that's right. Uh, that's yeah. how they would do that. So coming flooding yeah. back now, yeah, because they, they, they did um, for a short period of time, they did a window tax. So a lot uh -huh. of you find a lot of historical buildings in the UK where, where there is the surround of a window, but there's no physical window there. It's bricked up. Yep. And uh, and the yep. reason was because of a window tax they had for a short time. But yes, you are right. They, yeah, um, they, they they were they were taxed on the size, not basically you know when it's up in the air and stuff. But yeah, completely forgot that. Yeah. I completely forgot that. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got three. I've actually got four buildings here that are going to make up Market Street, and each one's going to have something different in it. So I heard you say you were looking for mortar. Yeah. So let's go into the stonecutter's house. And oh, so so each have... each house is is functional. You you actually using yep. it. Ah, oh, right. Because there's quite a few of my obviously yep. buildings where I am and stuff that doesn't really serve a purpose. It's just they look nice from the outside. There's a few ah. things inside where you. I take it this season you're actually using each part of your build. I love building villages. Uh, in every in every season I've done on my single player, I always build a village, and I have multiple buildings, and each building has its own function in it. I don't like having one grandiose. Um, I say grandiose, but you know what I mean. I don't yeah, like having yeah. one big build that has everything in it. I like to have. I like to move between my buildings. Uh, it gives a little bit of life to the game. 
Well, we'll not talk about your glass dome from last season then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here you've got you've got all the stones that are laid out here. And this is Market Street, so this is available for anybody who's wanting to do community builds. Just come and grab whatever you need out of here. Oh my word, how long did it take to make that much? It's it's oh. actually not that long. It's... If you go to if you look up mortar in the handbook, yeah. Um, you'll see that there's a recipe for the instead of doing it mixing it in the barrel you can actually do it in your crafting grid with water quick what? lime and sand and it'll get you 64 mortar and uh, so i miss i must have missed this one then because i've been making it yeah. in the barrel each time uh, oh, mortal. Yeah. I didn't, but i i thought <laughs> oh god i'm thick I thought that was just an instruction and basically what you kind of need in your bowel. Because I know you make no. more, more to in the bowel. So I thought, oh, you need sand yeah. in the bowel. You need quicklime and your bucket of water, probably. I didn't know you could make it in, the, in your crafting grid. Ah. Yeah, so you can make it in the crafting grid. So that, you know, I can mix up mortar. One, one bucket of water, one stack of sand, and one stack of quicklime. I don't use up all the, all the quicklime in the sand because you run out of water first. But it makes like 500 it makes a lot of mortar so are you having yeah, issues? the longest part are you having issues with a quick line though oh my word yeah. it takes so quick long to cook actually I, I i i can't tell a lie bessie i went on to the vintage story uh discord uh and basically put it in as a suggestion to fix the actual quick line recipe as in basically <laughs> for, uh, you know when, whenever you're doing cooking it does not reset its heat each time you do one item yep. <laughs> i don't think they're ever going to fix it personally but it's, it's super frustrating especially when you're doing the quick lamb i know it does it on certain other recipes as well but the quick line recipe because it takes so long to cook each piece and it just resets yeah. each time I can't believe it. So here's a little <laughs> trick. Here's a little trick that I learned with quick lime. You put your stack in there and let it heat up. And when it gets to a hot temperature, take all but one out or two, whatever it is for the conversion. Yeah. That'll continue cooking and the quick lime that you take out will retain its heat. So once the crafting area in the fire pit's empty for receiving items, then you can put that heated stack back in. I have heard there is another little fix for quick lime and it's called the better fire pits mod yes <laughs> <laughs> i've heard that's a wonderful yep. fix for quick lime because it basically doesn't reset each time it's cooking <laughs> these two houses uh they're both the 15 by 15 but i went ahead and took the wall out between so this is actually going to turn this into one house and it's going to be for wood yeah okay so i'm going to be setting up all the barrels so what you'll have you'll be able to come in here and you'll have the barrels up here for the wood oh you've got uh, logs ooh. and then down below it you've yeah. got ebony <laughs> yeah, i do and then down below it then you'll have uh the planks and stairs and, and all the other items that go with that wood so this whole area will be set up just for wood have you found any um purple heart yet i have not I actually I, uh, went on a trip looking for purple heart and I have not found any. And then this area, I'm going to set up for um, for iron and metals and all that kind of stuff. So right, yeah. anything having to do. So I'm going to set up a bunch of ingots and, and things like that in here. So I saw you had a bunch of the copper yeah. cap pieces. Um, yeah, so if you, I'm going to have the plates in here. So if you want to come in and buy and get plates, you don't have to buy them. It's just, this is like I said, this is a storage area for the entire server for industrial builds. So come on in, this is the Porter's Lodge. So every gatehouse had a residence right next to the gate where the Porter lived, and the Porter's the one who decides who can and can't come into the castle. Wow, okay. So that's what this is. This is the Porter's Lodge. It's nice. Down this little area. Nice Ooh. layout, very nice layout. And then we'll come out this way into the kitchen. And I'll let you shut the door. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, how do you do that? So, oh, that's just, it's uh, the paper? Yeah. yeah. It's just a normal place on the table. Really? I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, God. Yeah, if you look up here, if you look up here on, the, uh, on the bookshelf, you can also put in like the ink and quill. 
You can put oh. papers, you can put scrolls and things like that into them too. Yeah, I'm say I need to um I need to look a little bit more into clutter and stuff. I, I do have a lot of clutter around my area, but uh, when it's like stuff like this, I don't my brain doesn't process enough. <laughs> it doesn't think to put an ink and quill on a bookshelf where it would look good. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, yeah, I just have a little bit of clutter stuff around in different places. Uh, the only thing that's really usable up in this area is where I keep the peat and the firewood uh, for using in the furnaces here. Um, but we do have, I like this. I've made a an actual oven with the fire with a uh, Coke oven door on it. Ah. So you can actually... Yeah. Oh, see, I can use nice that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good idea, actually. Yep. Completely usable. Yep. And then some of the pipes that we got from the rusted pipes, I had some that looked the same, so I put them up above. Oh, that's nice, yeah. Uh, where the ovens are at to make it look like um, chimneys going up and out. Yeah, that looks nice. Yeah, yeah. that's what I thought. It's, nice it's, it's a good idea. I might, I might steal that idea. <laughs> <laughs> Because you've gone, you've gone quite heavy with resources this season, haven't you? Uh, yeah. As in, basically, yeah, that's you've, the entire... yeah, you've gone like industrial size with your resources exactly. this season. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. The entire thing. I one of the things I said early on is I just wanted to be kind of a resource hound for everybody. Whatever they need, just let me know. I'll go find it in mass quantities and bring it in for you and set it up in one location so anybody can grab it. This looks revolting, so this by the way. Be... I'm just saying, this looks revolt. This is green and orange. You wouldn't, you wouldn't drink it, would you? You really wouldn't drink that. Uh, oh my word! Uh, <laughs> peach cider, apple cider, oh. cherry. Got orange cider up there. Uh, let's see, I've got some mead someplace too. Maple syrup. Where's the mead? There it is. Fifty liters of fine mead. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little little uh, liquor storage area there. Yeah, for those quiet afternoons. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got another area over here that's set up. This is like more of a processing area for uh, the food. So this is where I will put in and seal up vegetables to um, to pickle, and same thing with uh, salting the meat. See, last last season we didn't have the expanded food. Uh, mod on did we no no how have no, you found didn't. it no. have, have you enjoyed basically the different things about it because i've not really touched it to I, be honest i love it and and for example grab one of these uh on the second shelf here grab that fruit bar off fruit of there bar, take a look at the bar. stats on that fruit bar. oh wow well, okay uh one of these fruit bars okay let's have a look yeah we got take a look at this we've got so when eaten standard... 100 saturation oh wowzers yeah. and 0.5 healing power now that's the basics for it but if you look down below the expanded food mods allow you to do other stuff to it so it adds another 160 food saturation plus 1.5 additional healing 310 and protein. 310 protein wowzers so when you eat this yeah when you eat this you're getting 470 oh yeah it does. <laughs> sorry just eating it yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, you did tell me. <laughs> there we go. I would say that's that's really quite so. So you've enjoyed actually uh, the whole different aspects of the expanded food. Um, oh yeah, being this season. Yeah, yeah. So, you know you got stuff up here. If you look up here, I've got uh, vinegar that's good for twelve point seven years. Uh, I got some soy milk for six point oh, yeah, eight. Soy There's milk, some peanut yeah. oil for one hundred and fifty four years. <laughs> uh, soy sauce. <laughs> olive oil and maple syrup so all kinds of really cool uh stuff that you can add into it plus i've been working on i had to make um oh what was it i had to make uh gelatin yeah. to make these fruit bars so i had to go through the process of making gelatin and bone broth and, and all that so pretty cool i like it so I've got two more cellars that are going to be put in here. Uh, this is going to be kind of a mass storage area for grain, right. flour, things like that, whenever I get it done. And then across over here, of course, will be the cheese and the milk one once it's all done. Now, I've seen so this. this I've like, seen, yeah, I've seen this in your videos. It's kind of like your squat. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. A little yeah. treasure room. Yeah, you know? yeah. So lots of stuff in here, all the fun stuff, uh, stuff making it look like, you know, ritzy and glamorous. 
Because you think if you're coming to visit somebody that is the manor, or the king of the manor, or the, the, the duke, or the earl, or whatever, um, they're going to have a waiting room for you to wait around in to kind of see all the yep. opulence. Yep. Yep. And, then, and then you'll come into the main area. And then this is where I'm setting up kind of like the throne room uh, area for uh, being able to... Uh, you know, have an area set up in here for that. Smash it, smash it. Where do yeah. you find your banners, by the way? Oh, I've so noticed there are a few people. <laughs> ah, there, so it's, it's from Luke. Yeah, and I'll take you to one of those underground cities here. I got one close by. I wasn't too sure if you'd it. like made it yourself or it was actually from the no. actual loot. Because I've, I've noticed a few people have it on the server this season. It's like, yeah. they look really, really but this nice. is that same room. It's that same room that we were just in. Oh, uh, right. Just another Big exit to come out this way. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And then this takes you to the walls. So from up here, we've got the wall view. We've got towers on either end. So how have you found, because obviously this is quite a big structure. Um, how have you found drifters this season then? Because obviously, obviously last season I did my castle. And I was yep. pretty much inundated permanently with drifters. Didn't matter how many, you know, lanterns I put up, how many torches I put up. They always used to find some sort of way of, of sneaking in somewhere. Yeah. So, of course, one of the things we have is the Night Watcher mod. Another one I've not and tried I, yet. I've not tried that one either. Uh, <laughs> let's go over here. We'll take a look at this one over here. There we go. Before it gets too dark. Oh, hold on. Relax. There we go. There we go. Where is he at? Here he is. Right. So this. So that's the Night Watcher. This stops, doesn't it? It stops drifters from spawning. It does it. Does it? It I... stops drifters, wolves, and bears. Right. And what's the area coverage then? Is it a decent size? So. Or... I think we have it set up in the server for sixty-four blocks. Oh wow! So it's not. Oh, rest. It's not bad size actually. That. Yeah, yeah, so 128 by 128 square. So like two of them round your base there, you're pretty much you're pretty much sorted, really. Yeah. Yeah, and as I was gonna say, I've got one, I know I've got one somewhere in the tower. I can't remember where I put it at, maybe up in this area. But I've got one up in the tower that kind of protects this area out here uh from drifters and stuff spawning, and then I've got that one back behind me as well. I love your roofs. I think it's a lovely color really is nice yeah i love that blue, blue that clay. takes forever to get that much blue clay <laughs> i found basically um with the whole trader system we have this season um i found it a little bit easier to get certain materials um it's like per had a setup where she had three traders constantly sleeping inside her house let's not go into details yep. as to why um but um so she was gonna like fudging it a little bit but she was obviously getting certain resources now and, and i tried to do i've tried to do the, a, a similar thing and my thing buying from them is lanterns it's just easy to buy ah. and cheaper to buy then and quicker to buy than me making them all the time so uh i found basically quite a few resources just buying from the trader system this season another thing that we didn't have last season and something i think has been quite good to have on this season this little trader mat system that we got going yeah oh wow yeah definitely. <laughs> we've got rainbow going yeah, on here so all the, yep all <laughs> the dies We've got all the dice set up. So again, this is this is all for community. So if there's something you need, just come over and just grab it. <laughs> so I told I told uh, uh, Sid that because he needed some purple uh, for his for his armor. So I was like, "Yep, come on over. I got lots of purple dye, and I can make more." <laughs> so do you have a general um, like size layout in your in your head? Do you, know, do you know how big you're gonna go with all the builds eventually? For your whole uh, well, area. I know that yeah, this area right here, here's the the main path that's gonna go around, so nothing's gonna extend beyond this right here. Wow, okay. Oh wow, so you're running out of room uh, quick then. Yeah, yeah. So the Great Hall will fall in just right in this area here. Uh, I'm gonna end up moving kind of this stuff over over in this area and I'm gonna put a water wheel in right here. Ah. Um from medieval expansion. 
Will it be so, a working? Yeah, run it out of will, will it be a working water wheel? As they're quite expensive yep, to I run. The, <laughs> yeah. So if you see, I've got a large gear right here, so I'll be able to connect to the water wheel just right out in that area right there. Oh, okay. And it'll attach to it. So yeah, let's take a look here at the at the main industrial complex. This is where all the factorization of everything takes place at. This is where the magic happens. <laughs> this is where the magic happens. Uh, and this is really cool because, um, you know, again, anybody want to come down here and use it, they can. Three help hammers set up on iron. Um, you have to engage, of course, that clutch to bring power over to here. And we're on a gentle breeze right now, so we're not going to see a whole lot out of it. A little slow and piddly. But when you've got even a light breeze, you'll see it really get to go. And I can kick out uh, steel ingots in no time at all. Yeah, I suppose with three, three, three iron health hammers, even with a slight breeze, you, 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 you're going to get through best of your jobs quite quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really does. So that's that. And then over here, if you kick on the other gauge, it'll throw power down to this line. And these, this line here is designed for torque, uh, for moving those. These lines are developed more for speed. So when I kick this on for the pulverizer, yeah, you can get a pretty good speed out of it. And it all collects down in here. So you can see I've got a ton of stuff down in here already that's been mashed up or ready to go. Oh, wow. Wow. And, and yeah. I take it a lot of this is for your dyes to take it, yeah? Yeah, a lot of it's for the dyes. There's crushed coal for making uh, ore bombs. I think I've got some sulfur in here still. Uh, powdered bauxite. Bauxite, yeah, yeah. Clay. Yep. Ultramarine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, ultramarine. Lapis yeah. lazuli. <laughs> wow. Yep. And then it's, if it's a great setup you've got. Anything, you can click this one on, and you have an automated pottery wheel here. So you basically I, put uh, the... You put the clay on it just like if you were going to be doing your normal clay forming. Right. But instead of having to add the pieces, you can just basically hold down on the right mouse button and it'll auto fill it. Oh, okay. Right. So it's, it's another part that's just, just speed it up, basically. So your yeah. clay production of pots and whatever you want to make and stuff is just I'll speed it up quite a lot, I think. Yeah. yeah, it's about six times, six X oh, multiplier wow. on it. So it's putting down six uh voxels per uh per click wowzers and the faster it goes yeah the faster it goes the quicker you can make it wow pretty cool and then that also operates the uh quarters down here too you so do know you that in. you do know that one of these seasons i'm going to make everyone play the whole season in vanilla <laughs> <laughs> well this is vanilla right here what do you yeah mean? yeah okay this is vanilla <laughs> this is pretty much it man <laughs> oh dear oh, the hell man. hammers are vanilla too Everything, yeah yeah, yeah it's yeah, not sure. vanilla on this is just gonna be this part yeah see, I, yeah, I, I, this a lot of this stuff you can do in your vanilla world yes i know but yeah, uh this yeah. gives me a lot of speed uh and then i like this uh this is actually chert that i this is your idea. Remember when you said to be honest, I don't know what you're going for, but it looks like a rusted grate. I don't know yeah. if, if that was what, what, what you was going for, but that's what it looks like. It looks that's like exactly, oh, that's it is. exactly what I wanted. Right, so I'm gonna say it just looks like a rusted grate. It looks really, really yep. cool. <laughs> yeah, I wanted an area set up uh, so that way I could, you know, when you're up here, you're not falling off of it. And, you know, and I wanted to be able to, you could see the mechanisms working underneath it. That was something that you had mentioned, you know? Yeah, I, th I, I thought like, basically, yeah, I you know, it, it adds because a lot of people hide away all the gears and stuff. Where me, personally, I think it's one of the, it's one of the cool parts of the actual, you know, vintage story in itself is, is all the working gears because so few games actually have them. So actually seeing yeah. like all the gears working and stuff. I, I like gears anyway. I just, I just generally, I think the, the whole concept of the of the industrial look is uh, is something I really, really like. Um, 
And I, I, don't, I don't know. Actually, I think it's just me personally. I'm a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've been using some of the pipes that I collect from the different areas to kind of create in. I want to actually move pipes into different areas and around here so that it, you know, it looks like there is, I've got one of the reservoir tanks here, you know, run pipes from it. So it makes it look like I'm harnessing a little bit of the uh, ah, temporal of course, power yeah. of the ancients. So this is the area I've set up for the industrial tree farm. I'm going to add two more of these. Wow. Uh, one down on this end and one down on this end. Um, so basically you'll be able to say, Hey, I need a bunch of, you know, fill in the blank or whatever kind of tree you need. And I'll be able to come in here and plant out a whole bunch of them, uh, harvest them in mass. Oh, you have a collection system, don't you? That's right. Yeah. So is your, I mean, I mean in your last video, yeah. you was having a few tiny, tiny hiccups with your collection system. I take it it's been ironed was, out since. Not all the way yet that's what's really weird about it is uh if i were to because when i test it it's like sometimes it will work and sometimes it won't and i don't know if it's because of where the water's dividing up the sticks to so it's the hoppers sure. themselves isn't it it's the hoppers that's not yeah. it's not pulling it down it's not picking them up and i'm not quite exactly sure why it's doing that it was working because I tested it and it was working just fine. But I think I'm wondering now if it is that I've got to move the water stream or I, let I, this all come I was going to say, more. basically, um, if the water stream was like one back and it, you had a dry yeah. hopper, would this the force of the water just just to just push the sticks down into the hopper? The hoppers are strange anyway. Um, they're not yeah, like they very much are. I would say they're not exactly like the uh, other block game. Their hoppers, they work a little yeah. bit weird. You um, can say Minecraft. It, it's not like Voldemort. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> I can I can see my viewers leaving. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the idea behind this is, is you know just like the old Minecraft tree yeah, farms yeah. used to have. You would chop it down it falls in the water stream it goes into the hoppers now what i've added is the storage controllers down at the bottom which are then linked up to this chest so anything that goes into the storage controller down there will go into this chest which then feeds it into that storage controller which then sorts it all into this area over here See, that's another thing that i wanted to try to get into this season which was the storage controller mod by cubitech because uh, it looked yeah. really really good and I, again, I've just not had time to get round to. I've not had time to get round to many of the mods because I've been concentrating on the building aspect. Um, but yeah. it looks really, really good, and something that, as a community, we can we kind of been screaming for someone to do a mod for it for ages. I think for me, the the thing the thing that I the, where I find it helpful is there is a lot of time that we spend sorting out our inventory system coming over grabbing stuff hauling it over putting it into its chest uh once you set this up it takes it takes a little bit of time to get everything together that you need to do it but once you do it now you create a way that you can automatically kind of sort your inventory so uh in my mod to the max world i'm working on the storage room right now and the idea behind it is i want to come in and dump everything from my bags directly into that storage controller and let it auto sort it for me. Let it put it away to everything. So I can just jump right back into doing what I need to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, that's why I really, really enjoy this. And it works absolutely wonderful with the better crates mod. Uh, I've got a, a mod spotlight video coming out early. Yeah, next week. I do like um, the better crates mod. I'm talking about Quentin yeah. from QB I was actually chatting with him the other day. And uh, we're going to have to try to get him on the server for a little bit of a tour, I think, because uh, he's, he's, he's expressed quite a lot of interest in uh, what we're getting up to as a server and stuff. And I said, we'll have to try to sort something out. So we'll have to basically Absolutely. try to come up with a plan for Quentin to get on and uh, have a look around our little uh, all of our little bases, because I'm sure he'll be interested to see what we've done with his chisel mod as well as basically his, his yeah. new storage mod. <laughs> And you've seen this. This is just the sluice box, right? Yeah, I can't get mine working. 
<laughs> well, let's well, let's get it going for you. <laughs> no, no. What what it is? So I can get mine to basically sift through the items and throw them out and stuff. I can't get mine okay. to go into a chest. Um, I have a hopper huh. going into a double chest and it doesn't work. It works with a single chest, but not with a double chest for me. And for the life of me, I cannot figure out why. Um, Cause I was thinking basically maybe it's something that I'm doing wrong, which to, to be brutally honest, it could be something I'm doing wrong, it's me. Um, but I don't know why it wouldn't work. It was working fine for the single one, but when the double one, nope. Didn't want to play. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, so I've got this set up. So eventually I'm going to have two or three sluices through here. And instead of having a chest up here, I'm going to put in crates because you can pull out of the bottom of a crate. So I'm going to lock in a crate for, you know, bony soil, one oh, right, for yeah. sands and one for gravel. Um, and then that way I can just drop everything I need to into the storage controller here and or eventually have all my storage controllers linked together so that i can put it into one location and have it all go in wow that's, that's to go quite to. good so you what you you're intending eventually to have everything all on one system as a basically so it'd be yep. like all the storage controllers linked up to each other um i'm not too sure how does this how do you access the storage mod? I don't know. Uh, see, that's what I mean. I've watched his 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 spot link. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've I watched the actual have... thingy, but I don't I don't understand how it all works. <laughs> I don't know. Let me check and see if I've got my controller on me. Let's see. So what's this? Say? No, I don't. Okay. Link to uh, three containers. All oh, right, let's link to three containers. Yeah. Items placed in storage controller sent to link containers. Link containers with storage linker range of sixteen. Priority is given. So how do you how do you physically see what you um what you have? Or you just basically just look? You just basically look at your better crates to see what you've got. And basically, what I'm asking uh, is, does it work as like the Minecraft um? Almost like, no. um, what's it called? Um, not J E I. Um, functional storage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it doesn't. So there is a there is a, a storage controller linking tool that you have to have in your hand. And you can click on the controller and it'll put like a gray box around the chest that's hooked up to it or the, the crate that's hooked up to it. So that's right. how you kind of see what's linked up to it. So it's, um, it's not so it's not like refined storage or um, no. uh, applied energy sticks. It's, it's, it's not like that type of storage. It's not like you can, no. you click on it and you see everything in your inventory. It's more along no. the lines of like storage drawers type of thing, where you can exactly. just yeah. right, Very right. I get storage, you, right. I get you now. Right, 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 yeah. right, right. I wasn't yeah. too sure where yeah. you know how basically the storage controller like physically work but it, it, if it's more long lines of uh, the whole functional storage uh yeah that makes a lot of sense to be honest so that's really what i've got done you've seen the b area um well i must say she you know it's and... you've done so much this season i mean it's only i think well i think we're on us we on our sixth month or maybe seventh month probably six so I'm gonna uh, say it's such a short yeah. amount of time. It really is, and you've done so much. And I look forward to actually coming back to see, obviously, um, even more being done because um, it's just wow. It's really, really, really nice. And I'm glad I waited around to get the official tour uh, from you <laughs> instead of basically just ransacking the place on my own episode. <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> that's creepy <laughs> it's cool but it, it's creepy as well you, you know it's a shame you can't put some clothes on him you know oh talking about clothes um it is customary right. when you're visiting someone to give someone a gift now i know you've got resources coming out your ears so i thought i'd bring you something unique okay Oh, okay. So, so, so I bought this. I actually bought this with my own gears. So I bought it for Ooh. you. And there you go, buddy. Now, Ooh, hope, is that the Joker pants? I hope Black you wear them. <laughs> I will. Let's see. I thought it's very, very unique Nothing. in you, Sheena. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Let me get my uh, my pajama bottoms off, and I can't. You know, and I'm wearing my high my high boots too. But 
See, that goes good with my normal outfit because I've already got the purple. Uh, oh my the word! King gloves. I can't believe you're making it work. <laughs> 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 I thought you'd look terrible, but you look god still darn. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Is he still wearing my? Am I still wearing my mask? You are still wearing your mask. Of course you are. Yes. I took it off. Did you? I well, it off I'm say. I was like, oh it's... no, I didn't. There, oh, okay, I took the helmet piece off. I took the mask. There, off. We, there we go. go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Put that one back on. Well, Shino, you know, I'm gonna say it is always a pleasure catching up with Bud, and we don't do it often enough. We really, really don't, and we should do. Uh, and uh, hopefully, we will have a little bit more interaction for the rest of the season, and we'll bump into each other a little bit more often. But thank you so much for showing showing your often you know, lovely base to obviously my viewers and maybe that one or two people who don't know who you are and maybe watches <laughs> me and watches no 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 other gear. There might be. It might be a thing. You don't know. <laughs> I bet you there's actually more than just one. I bet you quite a few. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's it's always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure catching up, buddy. Absolutely. It really is. Uh, and uh, thank you again for showing off your lovely, lovely base. And next time we'll have to go see your base. Oh yes, yeah, so I'm gonna say there's still quite a lot of work to do there. So. Uh, yeah, it might be a while. <laughs> yeah, we we never finish. Look, look at these. Well, yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. Never get done. <laughs> well, thanks right, again, buddy. buddy. Yep. Cheers. Cheers.